The 10 Best Hidden Rooms Ever The National Library of India is the largest library in the country and home to over 2 million books. Before Indian independence, it was lived in by the governor of Bengal, which might go some way to explain the secret room. In 2010, a hidden room was discovered during the restoration of the building. The room was 1,000 square feet, but no entrance to the chamber was found. It is essentially just an empty room, so it's anyone's guess what it was used for. One theory is that it was used to imprison Indian revolutionaries. It was a common practice for them to be thrown in small rooms. The room would then be bricked up, sealing them in forever. Another theory is that the room was used to hide treasure, but to me it sounds like a 19th century sex dungeon. I'm sure there is no other reasonable explanation for an empty room. High on the top of a French mountain was Mont Saint-Odile, a 7th century abbey. Between August 2000 and May 2002, over 1,000 ancient books were stolen from the abbey. After a while of meaningless investigation by useless detectives, the thief was finally caught in the act. It turns out he had been entering the library through a secret passage he discovered on an old map of the building. He would climb the outside wall and run up the secret staircase to reach the hidden entrance. One of the cupboards would then be opened by a mechanism allowing him to enter the library. The man, a local book collector, was finally spotted by security cameras. So for a man willing to read old maps to find secret passages, he's surprisingly naive. New York's Grand Central Terminal is known for its mysteries. It is riddled with closed off areas and hidden passages. There is an abandoned platform named Track 61. Hidden on the platform is a secret tunnel leading to an elevator shaft. The shaft is connected to a hotel directly above the platform. The passage was used by President Roosevelt. This way he could quickly travel straight from his train to his hotel room while avoiding newspaper reporters. Visit the platform today and you will see the heavily armoured private train the President travelled in, where it has been left to rust. During the mid-19th century, a small house in Indiana was owned by a man named Levi Coffin. The house was full of secret areas, and next to the bedroom was a small hidden room. Coffin would use this room to hide the slaves he was helping escape to the north of America, where they could live free. Over 20 years, he hid 2,000 fleeing slaves. He would look after them until they were ready to be transported to their next destination. Due to his efforts, Levi Coffin came to be known as President of the Underground Railroad. For anyone wondering what that was, the Underground Railroad was a network of safe houses used to transport slaves to freedom. The Ku Chi Tunnels are a huge network of secret underground tunnels in Vietnam. During the Vietnam War, the tunnels were heavily used by the Viet Cong as supply routes and for general movement. The trapdoor entrances are camouflaged to make them undetectable when closed. Use of the tunnels was so effective that the US Army mounted several campaigns against them. By use of carpet bombing, they aimed to literally just destroy the tunnels. But they were mostly met by failure. It was like a massive game of whack-a-mole, if the mole was a scary communist that only pops up at night time. It is thought that many of the tunnels are still undiscovered, which is worrying considering they were famous for being booby-trapped. England's Harvington Hall is a medieval manor house famous for its priest holes. A priest hole is a small hidden area of a building that a priest would hide in. They were forced to hide during the 16th century as Catholics were being persecuted at the time. Harvington Hall has seven priest holes. Four of these are located around the staircase and are accessed by lifting the individual steps to reveal a small ladder. When authorities would search for houses for Catholics, guards would be ordered to stand on the stairs, making them less likely to be searched. Next to the fireplace, there is a priest hole with an entrance so small that we can only assume it was built for leprechauns. As you'll see here in this image of an old man wondering how he could possibly get out.
During the American prohibition of alcohol, there were certain places people would go to illegally obtain booze, one of which was the 21 Club. The 21 Club was known to gangsters across New York City as the place to be. The alcohol was kept in a secret room closed behind a huge door that was disguised to look like a cement wall. The wall weighed two and a half tons, so it required several people to pull it open and reveal the rows of stacked up wine bottles. The owners were never found out as they used a lever system to dump the empty bottles into the sewers below the shop. A frequent visitor to the hidden room was none other than the mayor of New York City himself, which might go some way to explain why it was never raided by police. I solemnly promise, God helping me, to abstain from the use of all distilled, fermented, and malt liquors, and that means wine and beer. I don't drink, and I will do all I can to keep you from drinking. During the Second World War, Colditz Castle was used as a POW camp for captured British and French soldiers. During their time there, some prisoners crafted a fake wall and ceiling out of wood and mud. This created a secret room in the attic. In the secret room, they built a glider with the aim of flying it to freedom. They planned their escape for the spring of 1945, but the castle was liberated just before this. Passetto de Borgo was a secret passage that connected Vatican City to the Mausoleum of Hadrian in Rome. It was used as a secret escape tunnel by several popes. In 1494, Pope Alexander VI used it to escape an invasion. Pope Clement VII also fled through the passage during the sacking of Rome in 1527. The passage was about 800 meters long and it ran along the wall of the Vatican City. According to local legend, if you run through the passage 77 times, you will gain great physical strength. With 200 victims, H. H. Holmes is usually seen as America's first serial killer. In 1893, he built a large hotel in Chicago, dubbed the House of Horrors or the Murder Castle. It is now known for its deadly trap doors, or for its hidden rooms, where Holmes would murder his victims. But the most secret hidden room was down in the basement. It was called the Dissection Room, where he would murder 50 women before cutting them into pieces and burning their bodies. But the house also had gas chambers, acid pits, and even a stretching rack. Holmes was eventually convicted on four counts of murder and hanged by the neck until dead in 1896. Demo. Ah!